Hey Dave, thank you very much for having me over. It's just an amazing bike. Thanks for coming over, Mike. This bike belonged to a late friend of mine, uh, Bob, who asked me to help him liquidate some of his uh, assets. He had a diverse collection of various motorcycles, including British, Italian, and so forth. This one was one that he had started the restoration on, got it about oh, 70 or 80% finished, and I elected to take it over and, and finish it up for him, and he was pleased with that. One of the unique features about this bike is that at the time that my friend was looking for parts that he needed for his restoration was in 2002, and that was a year that they were liquidating the Cycle Hub in Portland. At that time, the Cycle Hub had perhaps the largest collection of BSA and mostly Triumph parts um, anywhere in the uh, world, perhaps. Most of it came out of Tricor in Baltimore, and 13 40-foot trailers ended up in Portland with all these new old stock parts. Wow. When the group came and bought out the Cycle Hub, they rented a large warehouse complex over in Northeast Portland, and a lot of people came out from all over the world, including locals, to uh, buy parts. It was open to anybody that wanted to come out. My friend came out with a shopping list, and among parts that he bought for this bike were the fenders, the wheels, the pipes, the tank, the wiring harness, gauges, electrical items. One of the things I like about it is that these parts were made the way BSA made them and not the way the aftermarket makes them. In the restoration world these days, we are limited to aftermarket parts, and a lot of those parts just aren't as nice as the originals. If you take a look at these pipes, for instance, these were built the old way. You'll notice that uh, there's no mandrel marks on these. There are some slight imperfections, but that was uh, the result of uh, the process they used to bend those around a buck back in the days. There's probably no two sets of pipes that are absolutely identical like you could produce today. They all fit the template and they all passed inspection and, and they all fit the bikes. Every reproduction pipe made today, whether it's American, Australian, English, or Asian, are made using a tubing bender that requires a mandrel, and the pipe is bent around that mandrel. In the old days, they had artists who made these pipes. What they did is they took a piece of straight pipe, filled it up with sand, capped off the ends, heated it up in a furnace, and bent it around a buck, a wooden buck, to get the right angle and then fit it into a template. Amazing. Since nobody does it that way anymore, there's no way you can get pipes that look as nice as these. The tank has never had gas in it. When it came to me, the tank was black, so it was originally made for a Thunderbolt. So uh, I applied a candy red processed paint to it. BSA used a lot of chrome, as you can see on the tanks. And so this is for a customer of yours then, Dave, is it? Yes, I'm uh, selling this to a collector who's starting out and has a nice collection going. And he's buying this bike and one other that I restored for a, another customer and then acquired it back when he wasn't riding it enough. Okay. <laughs> if I do a restoration for people and they're not riding them, I'll buy it back for them. <laughs> and this is just one of many restorations that you've yes. done, of course, Dave. Now, I don't specialize in A65s. My bailiwick has always been the Triumphs. I do some pre-unit construction uh, BSAs, such as Gold Stars and yeah. B34s and so forth, and uh, I've done a few A10s. And just to have all those new old stock parts, those NOS parts, is like the seat, for example, that's NOS, isn't it? The seat. Yes, it is. Yeah, the only thing we had to change was uh, the mufflers. He bought new old stock mufflers, but after he owned them for about a year, they started rusting and little seams were starting to uh, bubble through. So yeah. I had to replace those with aftermarket mufflers, but I think these are beautiful. Uh, they match the bike perfectly. They but you still can't beat the old original English chrome. No. I mean, this chrome is 60 years old. And yeah. Look how nice it is. Perfect. It's perfect. That tank was in a wooden box with wood shavings. <gasps> I hadn't seen the light of day since probably the time it was built in the late 60s. Beautiful. When Bob first got the wheels, they were new old stock wheels, but the rims were starting to get dull. 
So he sent those out to Starbright and had those replated. Wow. But these tires, they're hard. There's no cracks in any of these. They're always kept indoors in uh, a warm part of the Cycle Hub shop. If you look closely, you can see the original rubber tailings from when they were built. Dunlop still makes a K70 tire. After they shut down production in England in the early 1970s, they started making them in Kobe, Japan. Then Kobe, Japan had that huge earthquake about 15 years ago. Now they're made in Malaysia. They do say on the tire, made in England, made in Japan or made in Malaysia. Great for show bikes, but due to their age, I wouldn't want to ride. Yes, you see that, don't you, with collectors? They want the original tires, but the bike isn't intended for being on the road. As and such. people pay big money for these yeah. just to have it on a static display. Wow. How long has this restoration taken you to complete then, Dave? Well, it only took me about a couple weeks to finish up what I had to do on it. Okay. I also had some lead times during COVID. It's kind of hard to get things done you know, getting things polished and a little repair work done to make this bike present the way it does. I had to get things right and that took a little bit of time. Yeah. But actually I bought the bike in about 2003 or four, somewhere around there. I really haven't touched it till the customer showed interest in the bike and that was just a few months ago. This was a bike that was running at some point? It was point. a running bike when okay. um, my friend had it originally. Okay. Uh, it was missing parts and had modifications on it. It has not been started. The engine was rebuilt by DJ Cycle. Oh yeah. Dick Weidenkeller. Uh, yeah. Dick's left the area, he's retired now, but he was the A65 specialist. Uh, I recommended him highly and I'm sure this engine is as good as to be expected. Of all the years that I've restored motorcycles going back to the early 1980s, I have never acquired a bike that had the original toolkit with it. Sometimes I pick up a few odd tools, but never with the pouch and never complete. This one, uh, he was able to find a new old stock toolkit with the Cycle Hub liquidation. Does it have any logos on the other side or is it There's just no plain? There's no logos, just part numbers. Congratulations on just an amazing restoration. The Lightning was BSA's fastest motorcycle that you could buy in 1969 and uh, without question, one of the prettiest. 